about the same with blacks and whites. And yet, the blacks are arrested way disproportionately. They're, they're prosecuted in prison way disproportionately. They get, they get the death penalty way disproportionately. How many times have you seen a white, rich person get the electric chair or get, uh, you know, execution? But poor minorities have an injustice, and they have an injustice in war as well because the minorities suffer more. Even with a draft, with a draft, they suffer definitely more, and without a draft, they're suffering disproportionately. If we truly want to be concerned about racism, you ought to look at a few of those issues and look at the drug laws which are being so unfairly enforced. Uh, George, this is an unusual uh, topic that you're raising. But states have a right to ban contraception. I can't imagine a state banning contraception. I, I can't imagine the circumstances where a state would want to do so. And if I were uh, a governor well, of a state or a, le a or, or, a le or a legislator of a state, state I would totally and completely oppose any effort to ban contraception. Uh, so you're asking, given the fact that there's no state that wants to do so, and I don't know of any candidate that wants to do so. You're asking, could it constitutionally be done? We can ask our constitutionalist here. Uh, I'm sure, Congressman. Okay, come, come on, come on back. You, do you believe that states have that right or not, George? I, I, I don't know whether the state has the right to ban contraception. No state wants to. <laughs> I didn't, know whether, I didn't know whether I got time when it was favorable or not, but thank you. No, I think the Fourth Amendment is very clear. It, it, it's explicit in our privacy. You can't go into anybody's house and look at what they have or their papers or any private things without a search warrant. This is why the Patriot Act is worn, uh, wrong, because you have a right of privacy by the Fourth Amendment. As far as selling contraceptives, the Interstate Commerce Clause protects this because the Interstate Commerce Clause was originally written not to impede trade between the states, but it was written to facilitate trade between the states. So if it's not illegal to import birth control pills from one state to the next, it would be legal to sell birth control pills in that state. Senator Santorum? What's the question? The question. <laughs> Congressman Paul, let me bring this to you. You're running here in the Republican primary, but you haven't promised to support the party's nominee in November, and you refuse to rule out running as a third-party candidate if you fail to get the nomination. Why not rule that out? Well, I essentially have. It's just that I don't like absolutes, like I will never do something. But, uh, no. Never I, for a debt ceiling. Please don't interrupt me. Just <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have said it in the last go around. I said uh, they asked me that about 30 times. Uh, I think maybe you've asked me four or five already, and the answer is always the same. You know, no, I have no plans to do it. Uh, I don't intend to do it. And somebody pushed me a little bit hard, and I said, why don't you plan to do it? I said, I don't want to. So I have no intention. But I don't know why a person can't reserve a judgment and see how things uh, uh, turn out. You know, in, in many ways, I see the other candidates as very honorable people, but I sometimes disagree with their approach to government, and I'd like to see some change. Changes. I, I want to see changes where they're talking about a, a little bit of a difference in foreign policy, a, a, an interest in the Federal Reserve, a change in the monetary policy. We haven't heard one talk, minute of talk about cutting any spending. <coughs> we talked previously about cutting the military spending. That's cutting proposed increases. This is why I have proposed that we cut a whole trillion dollars the first year. If we're serious as Republicans and conservatives, we have to cut. So I want to put as much pressure on them as I can. But besides, I'm doing pretty well, you know. Third wasn't too bad. I wasn't too far behind it. Doing pretty well. Catching up on Mitt every single day. <laughs> Foreign policy is something that a lot of people think is your Achilles heel when it comes to getting elected. You have said that you wouldn't have authorized the raid to get Osama bin Laden. You think that uh, a nuclear Iran is really none of our business. How do you reconcile that when part of your job would, as president well, would be to Well, I, I, think, I think that's a, a misquote. I, I don't want Iran to get a nuclear weapon. I voted to go after bin Laden, so that, you know, takes care of that. But, you know, this business about when to go in, I don't think it's that complicated. I think we've made it much more complicated than it should be. Yes, the president is the commander-in-chief, but he's not the king. 
And that's why we fought a revolution, not to have a king and decide when we go to war. We would have saved ourselves a lot of grief if we only had gone to war in a proper manner. And the proper manner is the people. Elect, elect congressmen and senators to make a declaration of war, and then we become the commander-in-chief and we make these decisions. But we went into Afghanistan, we went into Iraq, and now we're in Pakistan. We're involved in so many countries. Now they want to move on to Syria, and they can't. There's some in Washington now can't wait till they start bombing Iran. We have to change this whole nature. You know, something happened this week I thought was so encouraging, and it reminds me of how we finally talked to the Chinese. I mean, they had killed 100 million of their own people, but we finally broke the ice by playing ping pong. But today, the, Chi the American Navy picked up a bunch of fishermen, Iranian fishermen, that had been hailed by, uh, by the pirates and released them. And they were so welcome. It was just a wonderful thing to happen. This is the kind of stuff we should deal with, not putting on sanctions. Sanctions themselves are, always leads up to war, and that's what we're doing. Eastern Europe is going to be destabilized if they don't have this oil, and this just pushes Iran right into the hands of the Chinese. So our policy may be well intended, but it has a lot of downside, a lot of unintended con consequences, and unfortunately, blowback. And Congressman Paul, we hear over and over again, people are hoping for a great vision for America once again, America on the move once again. Give us the great vision that is realistic, given the financial situation, a realistic great vision for America. Well, it's to restore America to our freedoms, restore America to our principles, and that is individual liberty and our Constitution and sound money. And in doing that, you have to understand economics. You can't solve any of this economic crisis unless you know where the business cycle comes from and why you have bubbles and why, why, why they break. You have to understand that we've had a financial bubble that's been going on for 40 years. It's collapsing. Nobody quite recognizes it, but we're in the midst of a real big correction. And the only way you can get back to growth is you have to liquidate the debt. But instead of liquidating debt, what we've done is the people who build up the debt on Wall Street and the banks, we've had the American taxpayer bail them out. We, we bought it through the Federal Reserve and through the Treasury, dumped it on the American people. The middle class is now shrinking, and we don't have jobs. But if you're an individual or a businessman, if you're consuming everything you're earning just to finance your debt, you can't have growth. So we have to liquidate debt. This is the reason I call for cutting spending. The only one that's calling for real cuts. You have to have real cuts. That's what the Republican Party used to stand for. But you can't liquidate debt. You can't, you can't keep bailing out the debt. That's what Japan has done for 20 years, and they're still in their doldrums. We did it in the Depression. We're into this now for five years, and it has to end. It's only going to end until after we understand the business cycle. Saturday night, again, as we meet. So if you weren't here running for president, Governor Perry, what would you be doing on a Saturday night? Uh, I'd probably be at the uh, shooting range. <laughs> Instead of being shot at. Yeah. Speaker Gingrich. I'd be watching the college championship basketball game. Football game. I'm the football game. Football game. <laughs> I'd be doing the same thing with my family. We'd be huddled around and we'd be watching the uh, championship game. I'm afraid it's football. I love football? it. Yeah. I'd be home with my family, but if they all went to bed, I'd probably read an economic textbook. <laughs>